Hello everyone, my name is Halvi. In this video, we are going to see how fast you can get a game over in every mainline Fire Emblem game. So I think that the best way to do this would be to start from completely fresh games that have never had any save data on them, and then choosing the hardest difficulty that the game has to offer from the start. I will be starting the timer at pretty much the same time that speedruns do for each game, and then I will be ending the timer when the main lore HP drops to zero. And I am not a speedrunner and these times may not be optimal, but I will be trying my best to go through menus and play the games as fast as I can. I will be doing anything that I can to speed up the games as much as possible, like mashing and skipping through text, skipping combat animations, or even enemy phases like you can do in the later games. We'll be going through the games by release order and then see how they all rank at the end. So starting with FE1, the timer starts right after starting a new game, and then I can't skip this text, so I just have to mash through it. Then I want to go into the menu and turn animations off. This should speed things up a little bit. Then I'll just move Marth closer to the enemies and drop his rapier so that he doesn't counter since that would take up more time. Then the rest of this is up to RNG. I just keep moving Marth closer to the enemies so that many of them can attack him, and it takes four hits from the pirates to kill him, and they can miss, but Marth will get killed soon enough and FE1 clocks in at 2 minutes and 21 seconds, which isn't a bad time for being the first game in the series. The timer for FE2 starts right after starting a new game, just like FE1, and right away, the game starts out pretty slow. We have to go around and talk to Mycin, Lucas, and Gray before we can finally get out of Ram Village and get into the first map. And now we run into a problem where the enemies are really weak, and Alm starts out pretty strong in comparison. These guys can only deal one damage to him, and you can't unequip or drop weapons in this game, so I just use auto battle to try and get through this map as fast as possible. I believe it is possible to get Alm killed here though, but it would take a lot of time and it would rely heavily on RNG. But the way it could work is that the enemies retreat to that one supply tile when they get low on HP. So what you could do is just let one of them get on the supply tile and then put Alm right next to him. Then just let him attack and do one point of damage to Alm each turn and hope that Alm misses many of his attacks so that the brigand doesn't die, and the brigand will also get healed to help him stay alive for long enough for Alm to get killed. But again, this would rely too much on RNG since Alm can kill these brigands very easily. So then for the next map, there are more brigands that only do one damage to Alm, but there is also an archer that can deal three damage to him and also attacks at range, so Alm doesn't counter. So Alm can definitely get killed here, although it does take quite some time since he likes to dodge a lot of the archer's attacks. I just move Gray and Lucas out of the way, and then all I need to do is spam and turn. The brigands will also try to fight Alm and get a few hits in for one damage each. Then Alm gets a level up and only gets one point of defense. Literally the worst thing he could have gotten for this video. This was actually my second attempt at this because in the first attempt, Alm got only defense on this level up, so I reset and now he gets the same level up again. So I don't think it's worth trying to get a different level up for a third time, so I just continue on. The point of defense does slow things down, but Alm finally goes down and FE2 comes in at 8 minutes and 57 seconds, which is the slowest out of all the games. For FE3, the timer starts when I select New Game, and we're going to do Book 1, since it is faster because Book 2 has a lot more text to mash through in the beginning of Chapter 1. Then after getting through the text, I turn animations off and text speed up to fast, and this is exactly like FE1. We just want to throw Marth's rapier away and get him surrounded by enemies and just wait for him to die. He dodges a few times, so it's not a perfect time, but FE3 sits at at 2 minutes and 49 seconds, which is surprisingly slower than FE1. Now, FE4 has two ways to get a game over right away in the prologue. We'll go over the faster way first, so the timer starts when selecting new game, and then I can press start to skip through the text. Then once I get control, I want to turn animations off, text speed up, and enemy speed up, and we're just going to move Sigurd and Arden down and leave a path for the enemies 
to get to the castle. Then we have to wait for cutscenes to play out and wait out one enemy phase, but then on the second enemy phase, this first brigand can reach the castle and when that happens, you get a game over and for this case, I just stopped the timer when Sigurd and the others disappear because it's pretty much like they died. This took 2 minutes and 12 seconds, making it the fastest time so far and ranking right above FE1. Then the other way to game over in this game is to get Sigurd killed, of course, and to do that, I just attacked this first brigand with the Iron Lance so that it slows Sigurd down and also puts him at a weapon triangle disadvantage, so he gets hit a few times by the brigands, and then I can go and attack one more on the next turn, and Sigurd gets killed on the counterattack. This took 2 minutes and 44 seconds. FE5 also has two ways to get a game over. Again, we'll go over the faster way first, and the timer starts when selecting new game. So right away, I turn animations off and message and game speed to fast. Then I send Leaf up and equip the Iron Sword, and then he dies after a few hits from the enemies to make for our fastest time yet at just over 44 seconds. Now the other way to game over in this first chapter is to remove Leaf's weapons and let him get captured. Then the soldier that captures him will run away and escape from the map and this is basically like Leaf dying so it causes a game over. This method was a lot slower though at 1 minute and 35 seconds. For the GBA games, the timer starts when creating the save file and FE6 will be done on normal mode since hard mode is not unlocked by default. But all I need to do here is toss Roy's rapier and let him get surrounded by enemies and he dies in just over 53 seconds. This could have been faster depending on the RNG, but it fits in right about here. FE7 is going to be a lot slower since it forces you to go through the tutorial in Lin normal mode on the first playthrough, so the prologue is entirely scripted with the game telling you where to move and what to do on each turn. Then in chapter 1, the game still guides your every move in the beginning, but then the tutorial parts do end and the game gives you full control to finish the map. So then at this point, I just want to rush Lin to the boss and toss her iron sword. And then after 4 minutes and 15 seconds, Lin gets killed to cause the game over, which is faster than FE2, but it's it's still really slow. FE8 then has all the difficulties available from the start, so I'll be choosing difficult. Then I want to move Erica up and trade away her rapier, then move Seth away. From here, Erica can be attacked by both of the fighters and they will kill her, stopping the clock at just over 47 seconds, going right in between FE5 and 6. For FE9, I choose difficult mode, and I first thought that it would be quicker to just unequip Ike's weapon, and then just let him get killed by Boyd after 3 hits, and this method took 44 seconds. Then I just wanted to try again, this time I take out Boyd on the first turn, and then I go up and attack Grail, and this gets Ike killed by Grail's counterattack, and this actually turned out to be faster by about half a second, putting it above FE5 as our new fast this time. For FE10, I choose normal mode since hard mode is not unlocked at the start. Then we just have to move Micaiah over a little and unequip her light tome. Then I also move Edward over just so that the other brigand would be able to attack Micaiah. But this first brigand was able to kill her with his first two attacks and stopped the clock at 34 seconds, making a new fastest time. For FE11, the time starts when selecting the difficulty, which will be hard 5, and then this will be very similar to FE1 and 3, except that it will be a whole lot faster since we can completely skip combat animations and enemy phases in this game. I just unequip Marth's weapons and move him closer to the enemies, and he dies in 20 seconds, making it even faster than FE10. For FE12, we're doing Lunatic Classic, and luckily for this game, the time timer doesn't start until after creating the avatar and creating the save file, so I unequip Chris's weapon and he dies in only 2 shots from this generic soldier after 18 seconds, making yet another new fastest time. FE13 will also be done on Lunatic Classic, and once again the timer starts after creating the avatar, and then starting off in the premonition, it's important to turn animations off, and Validar does not attack on enemy phase, so we have to 
rush Krom in and attack him on player phase. Krom gets two shot and stops the clock at 30 seconds, putting Awakening right in between Shadow Dragon and Radiant Dawn. FE14 will be done on Lunatic Classic, and when creating Corrin, it's important to have a defense bane, then the timer starts afterwards when creating the save file, then the prologue is impossible to lose and the game forces you to at least select Corrin and Takami and have them attack or wait. I have them wait since it's faster and the map automatically ends after two turns. The game doesn't allow for going into the options during the prologue, so I do it in chapter one and turn animations off. Now the reason I needed a defense bane is because Corrin does not get two shot by Xander without it. So Xander kills Corrin and Fates clocks in at one minute, placing it right below FE6. For FE15, we're doing hard classic, and time starts when selecting no, when asked to share information with Nintendo. Then we have to run up and talk to Celica here, and I think this prologue map is impossible to lose, and ends when you kill Slade. He starts out on a grave tile, so he'll be hard to kill there, so I just move Mycin up, and then Slade does start to move after a couple turns, and dies during an enemy phase that I skipped. Then this next part is going to be just like in Gaiden. We have to run back and forth in Ram Village, talking to Lucas and looking for Mycin. Then we can progress into the first map. Now it is possible for Alm to die in this map, and I decided to go for it, and it did take multiple attempts, but I did manage to get Alm killed here. So these brigands deal two damage to him compared to the one damage they did in Gaiden, and I just tried to move Alm in and get them all to attack him, and I moved the others out of the way. Then these these brigands are actually lowering Alm's HP. Some of them died and eventually there were three of them left all heading towards the supply tile and I try to block them in here and one gets to the supplies and the other two attack Alm and die and luckily Alm did not get defense on this level up. I run up and block the brigand in on the supply tile and he will not attack unless he has recovered a good bit of his health so he survives long enough to kill Alm and stop the clock at 3 minutes and 15 seconds. putting goes right in between FE3 and FE7. FE16 will be done on Maddening Classic and time starts when selecting no to playing online. So unfortunately for this game, choosing Violet's name, birthday, and all that stuff is included in the time. So I try to get through it as fast as I can. Then in the prologue, I move Byleth up and everyone else to the side. And then after a couple turns, enough enemies are able to attack Byleth and kill him, stopping the clock at 1 minute and 41 seconds, putting it right behind Fates. And now for the last game, FE17 will be done on Maddening Classic, and time starts when selecting Start right here. So in the prologue, it's important to turn animations off, then we just have to run up and attack Sombron, and Alir's HP will get pretty low, and this is the point where the game wants you to use an engage attack to win the map, but it won't stop you from just ending the turn, and then Sombron will kill Alir on enemy phase and engage clocks in at just over 40 seconds, placing it in between FE10 and FE9. And here are the final results. Looking back, I think that some of these times could have been better, but I don't think the rankings would change too much. New Mystery would still probably be the fastest, and Gaiden would still be the slowest, even if you can manage to get Alm um, killed in that first map. And with all that said, this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, and have a great rest of your day.